Dream Hack. Yeah, how's that? How's I, that I saw a tweet about that. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. Uh, stream just restarted, but it's okay. Right, Dinos! well, everyone's got to finish Dinos! their drink. No, it's Everyone's it's got to finish their drink, dude. That's it. Oh. So, PR stunt, Robert, so is is that ever going to happen? I mean, because that would, that would be a good step. I think just having all you guys... that it was a PR stunt, I think is, that was the way of saying no. Thing is, <laughs> could, could it still happen? Could it still happen? You ha you, what we have to take in consideration is, basically, you have Turtle, which is one company, and then you have DreamHack, which yeah. is another company, and then you have MLG, which is a third company. And all these three companies have totally different outlooks and strategies. Mm. This is at least my take. DreamHack, we're basically still and will always be an event company. You know, we do festivals. We're an entertainment company. Mm -hmm. Turtle is is uh, a, a VC funded you know esports company who saw you know how to make money in this space fair enough mlg has changed you know uh, focus a lot of times now they're basically more or less a kind of competitor to twitch because streaming is is their you know what they're focusing on so how could these three different companies have a joint vision if there's nobody well, I mean, what they could probably says, do, Robert, is yeah, they could maybe name. actually really believe in this concept called esports, and they could think to themselves, you know, <laughs> rather than me having a really small pie, if we all get a nice slice of a huge pie, that's better for everyone. But instead, they could all just say that publicly and then do things constantly that contradict each other. Like, I'll give you Duncan, a great yeah, example. To be fair, there's Duncan, no precedent. Duncan, Duncan, no precedent I'm, I'm Swedish. I know yeah. how Germans and Americans behave. Destiny, I've got a great example happen. for you here. Of something that actually was mentioned to me the other day, and admittedly this came from someone at Twitch, so it'll sound naive in that sense. But if you think about it, it's a pretty good logic. He was explaining to me, maybe you know this, you know on your channel, you can set it so when you go offline, you broadcast and essentially you restream someone else's channel. You know yeah. you can do that? Yeah, hosting. Okay. In theory, most tournaments in the world do not overlap. Most tournaments in the same game is like it's one's at this time, then the other one purposely schedules afterwards, and then one's one day, but then another one two weeks later is totally separate. So some of those channels go totally unused for hours at a time, days at a time. If all these people really cared about making esports bigger, they'd just all ESL would set their rebroadcast at the end to go to the MLG. The other one would go to the OGN afterwards because the key thing is the original channel still gets the sponsorship money, etc. So you don't harm yourself in any sense. You only help everyone get bigger. Yeah, but depending on how you view business, helping your competitors is harming yourself. Like, you're getting into, like... like what does that like mean? People... Only if you're so insecure, you don't think you're better. It's not about insecurity. It's about the fact <laughs> that, like, if if this tournament... Yeah. If... <sighs> Look, fuck. Like, let's say that MLG re-hosting tournaments was the difference between yeah. NASL going under or not. And then NASL goes under, and that gives MLG theoretically more space to play around because now they don't okay. have to schedule on NASL. Like, it sounds shitty, but technically the other company would want to see NASL go under or IPL go under because now they've got more freedom. They've got yeah, more access to players. They've got more access to all that audience who's not going to be watching those other tournaments. I mean, it sounds shitty, but I mean, like, historically, yeah, but that's, that's the that thing, Stephen. No people... one. No one's PR speeches. I'm out for myself. I'm glad they failed, and I hope that everyone else gets dicked over. So I said, everyone's yeah, speeches. No one's PR I do this speeches, for the PR... love of esports, and I really yeah, but believe... that's no. bullshit. And Stephen, just that's said the thing. It. Listen, nobody does it no. for the love of esports. Stephen, listen to me. That's a lie. Every single person you have on this fucking show, I bet Red Eye when he comes on next will be like, "Oh, I do it for the love. I want this thing to get huge." But these are the people making these decisions, mate. So how can they one hand have you a personal what, philosophy that doesn't extend to how they behave in the world ethically? If you can get, if you can get Sundance on this show to agree with that, then I'll then I'll agree with you. Who but gives I mean, a like, fuck about yeah. Sundance, dude? I don't well, even know why you mention it. I give a fuck about Sundance. I don't know the guy to pitch. And I'm so glad we're gonna like. Oh man, Sundance incoming, man. Thing is, thing is, thing is, this thing that we're involved in right now. It's not a 420. It's just tobacco. Is it's for the past 15 years we've been used to doing stuff, you know, in the Where's shade. It, it is. It's from from uh, an island in the West Indies called Jamaica. I got it. It's a Christmas present. I love people from that place. Thing, thing, thing is, for the past 15 years <laughs> we've been so used. We've been, we've been used to doing our own 
thing, you know, <laughs> without, you know, you know, anybody else giving a notice. Wow. Now, Good night, everybody. it's exploding <laughs> everywhere. So how are we going to go from being some something that once was a counterculture, then a subculture, and now it's mainstream? I think we should get everyone high on LSD, Robert, and that we should like, <laughs> blaze it, storm, man. blaze it, storm, listen tomorrow, and then take over the place and squat. You up? Are you up for it? <laughs> Have another I... four twenty. <laughs> <what I'm> <laughs> if, if I if I if I may just chip in uh, momentarily. Go for it, uh, well, look, dude. I, look, I I agree with Duncan. Like this, this, we've talked about this often privately, and and. Um, uh, I I see a lot of people that talk about the love of esports, and some people are genuine, and, and unfortunately, a lot of people aren't. And generally, most. yeah, yeah, most. Uh, and and what people really mean is my my business happens to be an esports business, and I'm passionate about that business. That's exactly. what they mean. It's, it's, or it's, I it's want a... esports to do well so that my business can make exactly. a lot of money. Not I want it, esports it... to do well because I give a fuck about the industry as a whole. Really, more yeah, in, in so much as it affects my business. And, and, you know, perhaps that sounds like a really obvious thing to say, and I apologize to all the people that are expecting me to say something perhaps a bit more profound. But th th there's a real reality there. Like, it, what, what I find really disturbing is that these people almost fucking believe it when they're saying it. You know, like, I really want esports to succeed holistically. Like, Riot are a great example of that. They're always trumpeting about everything they bullshit. do for esports. Bullshit. Where, yeah, and bullshit. the cost is bullshit. The cost is bullshit. It, they're doing everything for Riot primarily. And I'm using yes. Riot as an example because they're a really obvious example. But there are more subtle examples which I won't name because one day I hope to work with them. Dream act. So. <laughs> 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 so my point in all of this is though why haven't we at this stage and you know we're talking it's 2014 um you know i've been around in esports for a good while a decade i know duncan's been around a lot longer we've never really had uh like every group that's meant to represent the interests of esports as a whole and have representatives from each business in it like the G8 or G7 or G10 or however many people were in the fucking G back in the Counter-Strike days where it was meant to be all the big organizations were driving esports forward. And they couldn't even agree to boycott one fucking tournament together. They, I mean, they were a fucking joke. It was a dick measuring contest. But we've never really had uh, a panel of people that want to drive the industry forward right. that also get an opportunity to represent their businesses within that. Because Do you want to hear my theory? Uh -oh. go, go for it. I was just going to make a quick point at the end. Oh, okay. uh, which yeah, go ahead. Just, go ahead. No, no, it was, it was just to say that, you know, like, Duncan's absolutely right in what he's saying. Uh, we're not there yet. I know we're getting fed all the mainstream media bullshit about how esports has arrived and it's the promised land and it's a moneymaker and game developers are making esports games de facto. But the reality is we're still not there yet. And we do need to combine our efforts to grow this fucking pie or we're going to have another big lead awakening in a few years. 2009. Ow. Well, I'll Ow. go to Duncan's theory and then maybe he's got the answer. So my theory on why it's like that and why everyone thinks in the short term is because the basic premise for all business conducted in esports is the con game. And the idea is to get as much money in a short amount of time and even if you fuck people over, just get the money. So what happens is, think about esports managers, the guy who books Duncan, the flights and stuff. Duncan, you're right. We've been playing the long fucking thing for 20 years at dreamhack you're right okay so okay. so <laughs> every guy every guy who started as an esports manager right nowadays maybe it's possible one of them had a real job and he was really in business and now he's interested in esports and he transfers his skills even that's the exception every guy who starts as an esports manager on any level is some sort of guy who has some weird reason where he's not really talented, he doesn't really know about business, but his trick, the way he, his main skill he has to develop is to first of all convince a bunch of pro players that he has some skills. He doesn't yet. That's his first skill he must pass. Get through this hurdle. Convince pros that you are going to be better at talking to sponsors than they are. Once you've convinced them, that gets you to level one. And we've seen tons, they're still around now, fake managers who don't know anything, and they're just, they're just inexperienced guys who want to be someone. Then the next level is... It's a guy who then can convince an actual sponsor to get on board. And he convinced him that this my team's going places. It's going to be good one day. He does that. The next level, 
we're looking at now like bigger managers of actual organizations. Like think of those old tournaments back in the day where they used to go to Intel and get the exact same prize purse as we have for a tournament now, 10 years later, but for a game that had a 10th of the viewers had almost no mainstream exposure because they lied to them. They told them the same shit. Oh, look at the stats on the gaming industry compared to the movie industry, all this bullshit that we've heard a million times. So the entire business is based on hucksterism of just trying to get money out of people for something that isn't real. And at the core, you sort of know yourself like this isn't real. And the really good guys can eventually I convince concur. the way they lie to you is they Shut up, they convince Duncan. themselves. Well, Wait a second. I, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. That that is the inherent, you know, problem with what we do and why we're, you know, why we, even though we we love it to bits, the thing we do, we know it's a fucking scam. It is. What esports okay, generally? Like, are you talking about esports something... of this game? What oh, are you no, saying? No, no. Okay, so most, this is... most. What are you saying? Most. The the more uh, successful we get, the more you know this ingenious the the industry gets so you know the old guys we're standing there looking like fools because we still have you know this belief in you know brotherhood and uh, community and all of a sudden there's like shit i just got ass raped by you know a fuck ton of money whoops <laughs> one thing that one did, thing did, that the did that esports... make any sense? <laughs> okay, the, you the are. Or do you want to continue? You had, you had me. These ask problems. Me. These problems aren't <laughs> unique to our community, right? And as we get more money going through our community, we're gonna restart, start to resemble what the rest of the world looks like, right? It's like how any you take like any small community and they're really cool, and then as soon as they get big, everybody complains about all the problems. Steven, 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 Steven. That is that. It's that, that's a fallacy. Why? It's should not. You... Why should you comply to how the rest of the world does things? If you don't want you have... to, that's fine. But then you have to understand that you have like Fuck this monumental the undertaking. Fuck you have, the but rest then you have this the monumental undertaking of changing Fuck the system the that's been in place. Why for does every single, Why does Fuck. every debate with Destiny end with him saying, "Dude, that's just the way things are. That's the way things are going to be. Just accept it." Like you're the guy, right? Who instead of being like, "Let's stop rape," you're like, "Listen, Steven some people need to rape. Nihil. Some weak people are going to get raped." Just no, 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 one at a time. Steven, Steven, Steven. Fuck, you yeah. can't go into an arena like with fucking dewy-eyed innocent like this. Like, like what you're talking about, like, oh, well, in esports, Dude, we do short, hey. blah, blah, blah. No, 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 hold on. Because that's bullshit, because it happens everywhere. Question, but, question, no, no. Question, Robert, question, stop question, interrupt. Question, stop question, interrupting, question, Robert. Question, hold on, let's even let's even finish. finish. Look at the fuck. Look at all the fucking <laughs> trying to fuck over solar question. energy, right? That's something that's good Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Question. And all the car companies trying to ban imports when the car companies run out of Robert, shut, shut up. up. argument right here represents all the problems your show has had for all these years. Oh, Getting punched all, motherfucker. For once in your life. And acting Real like you need to. <laughs> like happens fucking everywhere. We're not special fucking snowflakes. We're the only Steven people who ever... is getting a seizure right now. Oh Please my have... god. Oh, my. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. I was just lying to him. What were you saying? There? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you repeat that again, Stephen? Now, Robert, no interrupting this time. When when Thorne talks about how esports is like some short term fuck you instead of looking at the long term health of everything, that's true. But that's literally how everything else looks. Look at ISPs in the United States. Look at car companies in the United States. Look at our energy problems in the United States. Look how much blowback goes against fucking carbon credits. Against fucking Tesla. Like literally everything fucking this <coughs> way. Miss, and I'm Mr. Mr. Bonnell, you're you're uh, apparently you're you're American. You don't believe yeah. in socialism, right? I never said I didn't believe in socialism. <laughs> He's he's pretty socialist. Like when I when I've talked about it. Yeah, uh, but uh, his, his... Right. I'm just saying that like I'm just saying that if you want to have like an like esports not doing any of this because what you said you shouldn't do what the rest of the world does. Fuck I I mean I I agree with you to some extent. Like I'm I don't work a conventional job. Obviously I'm not on any kind of conventional path. I'm just saying that the challenge of making esports legitimate is a lot different than the challenge of let's make esports. Why do you oh, come why on. why do you want to make something legitimate? What do you? I mean, we're playing semantics. It's, you want things yeah. to be legit because you want to make no, money. No, 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 no. I mean, you have to define no, 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 no. legitimate. What the Problems. hell is that? Legitimate. I don't want esports to be legitimate, Stephen. I, I I have this like <laughs> hobby horse. I always you know um, slash or thrash or whatever. It's like we don't have to become mainstream because mainstream is going to be us sooner or later. And the more you try to to uh, conf 
you know, to c confirm to the status quo conform, as, conform, as it is yeah. right now when it comes to media or how you should do or don't do, you're fucked. You're going to die. That's not that's always not, true, though. Yeah. Here's the thing. That, I think that doesn't apply to everything. Remember, Thorne, Thorne, Thorne. 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 thought he could get everybody to call everybody faggots and gooks, and that I thought I could get everybody on board with that idea. You remember that? And if I I'm on board, Stephen. Yeah, Where do I sign up? Where do I go? Where do we start this revolution? Stephen, hold my hand. We can do this. Revolution! Tom and Louise. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Doesn't always work that way. Like, uh, all right, like, Oh, actually, no, 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 no Richard, Richard first, I, Richard I, first. I, I, I've just got a little thing to add to this, and it's a sensible point, so I'm really sorry. Uh, I linked you guys in the chat to an article uh, about Sam Adams, the the brewery, you know, that make the beer. Uh, Europeans probably aren't as familiar with it. I know Americans will be. Uh, Jim Coke. I think it's pronounced not cock. It's just the way I want to pronounce it. <laughs> uh, it is. It, he talked uh, recently in a. Uh, magazine uh, Inc.com uh, about how he supports competitors within the industry um, and he said a few things in there that I think are quite uh, profound I mean there's a really wishy-washy thing at the start where he talks about how enough yeast to working together they change the ecosystem for the mutual benefit of all will ignore that but Sam Adams actually go out and proactively loan money to competitors uh, so they can grow the whole sort of brewing industry, which, as we know, through taxation and other... Um... I wish I had that kind of, you know, uh, money so I can... Yeah, okay, well, you know, no, no, but I mean... I, I, money I, I, to, my, to competitors it, or... Uh, of, of, of course, it's all subjective, uh, but, but anyway, so it, it just sort of ended with, um, you know, I don't want to be a Goliath, nobody should want to be a Goliath. It's a lot more fun to be a shepherd boy as long as you have got one uh, more than one David. And if you read the story of David, his life kind of sucked after he became king. And I would urge anyone to read it because what what people are now <laughs> what we're now starting to see in in big business in America is Soren um, is, is is misunderstood. He was a servant. Yeah, well, I, I don't want to go into biblical stuff. Yeah, exactly. Which, 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 is, <laughs> which is don't be wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm super up for doing another show uh, about. Bible studies, which will I I think Twitch would love, but I I, I think uh, just to focus on it. I think there is a think... change in big business culture right now where people are starting to look at you know opening patents and things like this, where we're actually realizing that growing an industry holistically ha does have ta tangential benefits, even if you're a market leader. And I think esports could kind of learn a lot about that. Like what I've seen business wise is esports doesn't have a lot of serious businessmen. I mean, people wouldn't believe it from this appearance, Robert, but you're thank, one of the few thank, we've thank, got. Thank you, um, Richard. No, oh, it's, it's true. Both, it's true. Both accounts. And, yeah, I know. I, you know, I love you. And uh, I, I, I think that people need to get ahead of this particular curve, which is that, you know, growing an industry uh, collectively is a be much better idea than still trying well, to... You know, be up for. I mean, because the only thing that's changed is how upfront you are about fucking the competition. Like, uh, five, six years ago, people were really upfront about fucking the competition. You know, like MLG events on the same time as DreamHack, blah, blah, blah. Everybody was trying to fuck everybody else. Uh, organizations trying to fuck everybody else. What's changed now is people are just being subtle about it, but we're still trying to fuck each other. And that's what I mean. It's, it's not going to work. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, look at. I mean, there's a lot of companies. A lot of companies that went under. I mean, you know, I think NASL went went under because of a, a contract, right? A contract that ESL got versus them getting it. You know, it, it, it is a competitive environment, and that's. I mean, to be, that to is... be fair, with with NASL though, I mean, they were so terribly run internally with the whole Russell Fister thing, and you know, um, some of the shit he was getting up to, and you know, I know he was a character. But but, but, uh, but can you? They're not, can, they're not an example of a good. Well, business. what I'm trying to get at is, Richard, can you see yeah, them no. just giving them the, just letting them have the contract? You're saying that it should be more of this holistic no, type but, of, but, of. Yeah, but here's the, here's the thing, okay? Like, if you've already got a successful business model and you know taking a contract away from a competitor and in inverted commas, and let's be clear, NESL, and this isn't a damn ESL's uh, behavior here, like at all. I'm not. I'm not doing that. But uh, let, let, let's say, you know, ESL didn't see NESL as a competitor. Now, maybe if they were a bit more aware of the situation, and I know they absolutely weren't, and it was the World of Tanks contract, and they do this regularly and religiously, they say pitch for our business every year. They don't care what a good job you've done, you've got to re-pitch. Then they approach DreamHack, and they approach DSL, 
they they approached everybody and said you know we're gonna we're open to pitches and esl did a pitch that knocked them out the park now what i'm saying is maybe esl kind of knew that nesl was gonna die on their ass and that gave them an opportunity to move into america uh, which they then later did. Maybe it was a coincidence. Maybe it wasn't. But so equally, in- ESL giving like- NASL the contract was like when, um, what's his name, Kissinger tricked the Russians into going to Afghanistan, so they <laughs> totally ruined their whole empire, and then eventually America no, could go and take that shit. It was Kissinger, right? He uh, tricked them. Uh, I knew he tricked it. them. I knew it. <laughs> I'm not bringing Kissinger into this. Uh, but, 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 what I, but, but in the environment I envision is that we're all aware of each other's businesses and we've got an opportunity to reach out to each other and say, look, this contract is the only thing keep, keeping us afloat. If you take it from us, we're under, we're done. And, 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 nobody, you know, no, nobody in, in, on that level gives a fuck because they are only looking out for number one. Right. That's... Yeah, I know, and that's my point. I, uh, that, that that has got to change because competition is what drives every industry forward. The only good thing to come out of capitalism as uh, as a whole, and as you know, I'm a super fucking communist. The only good thing to come out of capitalism as a whole is the idea of competition, sort of um, influencing businesses to be better than the other one, and we 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 no, no. We, get, we get better ideas. But what we're that's doing what, in esports, that's... but that's not yeah, that that's not facilitated. That's just something that's resulted in a heavily yeah, yeah, competitive exactly. environment right. so exactly you're so talking about more government. facilitating these things like yeah so, i should but, just no, as a gesture do this yeah so no but what i'm saying is that the, the point shouldn't be at that point to kill the competition and we do this all the time in esports we want to kill the competition so we can have all the money yes and all the stuff and ourselves. No. Yes and then, when, no. we, and then when we do that we wonder finish, why we let him finish, let him finish. and we fuck hey, ourselves up richard shut the, the, the fuck up <laughs> Robert. Thing is, when it comes to esports, uh, especially this, you know, this whole, you know, production value. Uh, oh, uh, company X is doing better than company Y, and company Z is. Thing is, that is good, because everybody wants everybody else to succeed. Actually, because it makes everybody in the same space looks look good. Mm-hmm. But if somebody fucks up, you know big time like NESL Mm -hmm. everybody across the board looks you know oh you're in the same space as these guys these fucking Mm -hmm. clowns so yeah yeah, it is what What is that Okay. No, no. What, 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 what are you saying there, Stephen? Is this is this absolutely true? Are you talking about this a, is true. external people looking in, or are you talking about people in the yeah, community? Yeah, right. Yeah, no, no. It's no external. 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 external, external, external. external. Oh, okay, absolutely okay, okay, sure. true. By the way, if sure. they look in, or if they look in on uh, on our industry and they're thinking about investing it, it doesn't matter whether you're associated with company A if you're company B. If company A has took a load of money, pissed it up against the wall, and goes under, that external uh, contributor will look at the industry as a whole and go, "Fuck it, it's cowboys. It's." It's the Wild West there. I'm clowns. not going to invest. Yeah, clowns. Sure. And, 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 and there's there's a lot of sponsors okay, that have sure. big sponsors that have seriously thought about coming into esports and the collective failures by other organizations that have had access to sponsors in that same field, they go, don't bother. And and we've missed out on a ton of money by people doing things in an inept fashion. That's a fact. Yeah, everybody globally, okay. actually. Mm. All right, so I do want to get to some... I do want to get to a League of Legends topic in a second, but I wanted to bring back one point that we just we were talking about that I wanted to continue on, which, like, going taking back a step. When we were talking about people doing things short-term, right? Just, like, doing shit for money, like, right now, and just grab it and don't really give a shit about uh, just the overall uh, just vantage point and if it will grow esports. Uh, how are you? How do you expect people to do that? Like, Sapenda is a good example, right? Sapenda comes come in recently, a lot of money. People grabbing at it. Um, Sapenda just you know, l- lose money. They don't win. Yeah, well, yeah, but I'm saying like all the people. So we've to finish this example. There's been a lot of examples. Okay, like in, in the past years now, and then you guys have been in esports. Even I don't even get me. the complaining about Sapinda and what they've done and all that stuff. Like Stephen would be like, well, of course you're gonna go to the best offer, and it seems like it could work out. I'm like, no, that that I haven't lived my life that way at all. I've had tons of job offers in my career that were for way more money, and there was a new organization. And listen, we really love what you're doing, and this is gonna be a long-term commitment. And they even they're not even fake. Some of them like flew you out to an office and they showed you around. They're like, listen, you're gonna work with this director, and right. they still never happened, or they clearly were gonna go bust in six months or something so if someone takes that to me they knew they, were, they should know they were taking a risk 
there's certain things that have a level of stability. Why would I? I never disagreed with that. You can stick with, that? with What the fuck? When would I have ever disagreed with that? <laughs> Let, listen. <laughs> Can you just pretend she did? I, can pretend, can you pretend? I'm losing argument. I'm not really even help. fucking having. Holy shit. Steven, Steven, it would really help the show if you could just say <laughs> that you disagree with that. Please. We need this. It's our last show. <laughs> Your entire premise at all times is hey. like humanity has these base values they will always go back to and you shouldn't look, expect anything Look at I the, the show. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Talking. Oh my oh. fucking God, Robert. What did Thorin okay, say? Duncan, what did you say? You always go... Philosophy Robert, is always stop, like stop. humans have these base values that they will always go back to greed and selfishness and go on like that. And I'm saying aspire to be more. And you're like, no one will do that. Come on, that's unrealistic. Looking real. Nope. Looking the fucking. Get into, get into like a, okay, for, fuck no. I never even fuck off. I never said we can get into like a huge philosophical discussion about like how you can approach the fucking world. But that doesn't mean that even if I'm telling you that people are like basically fucking greedy and shit, I'm not saying like go full fucking retard and just do like Steven, whatever. Cash are, you greedy? are you greedy? Yeah, but I'm not fucking retarded. Are you greedy though? No, but you, okay. So I think what I think what Thorne I think Thorne was for good esports and for esports like altruistically. Do you ever do things like that? Yeah, I'm for sure. sure. Sometimes you do, right? Sometimes you do I a stream in a game, game that might not I got, got you much. Game, but... I got the gamer guy four or five thousand dollars for free. I didn't do anything. Sure. Yeah, sure. This I did the uh, doctor's. We've given we've got a perfect example. You and I both work in esports, make money from esports, sometimes could make more, but have done things that wouldn't make us more but are altruistic. So then why is everyone else who comes on this show, who is a key okay. member of the industry, allowed to say these things, espouse these values, but never have to do them? And you guys are no, because you're like in a because even though I know I do that, I never approach everybody else as other the same. It's like it's basic what you call fucking game theory. It's it's um it's the idea of approaching the world as it is instead of what you would want it to be. Just because I am an altruistic person and i know that like for the most part like if somebody wants to help with a big charity or if i think there's an important cause for somebody for like yeah i'll like i'll help with that or whatever but that doesn't mean that i'm gonna you know i'm gonna function in a way that's going to leave me vulnerable to other people fucking me over because i know that everybody else doesn't function on the same level right that, that's what i'm saying in terms of like approaching an industry with all these like good I'm ideas not talking and being thing, what'll Steve, happen what? We talk about politics, okay? Me and you having a discussion now doesn't matter because we can never get Barack Obama in here now and really say, like, why do you do that, man? Why do you do it? Like, we can never talk to him. You have a fucking show where you have the people who make these decisions on the show and then they tell you the same shit. No, I want esports to be bigger and I love it. And you sit there blithely until a trigger word goes off about some other shit to do with politics or something. And then you talk, you never say to that guy, wait, wait, that's a lot. You don't do that. You say you want because that, but then why do you do this the equivalent, Because this show has the equivalent accountability as any fucking random show on Fox News or MSNBC. <laughs> Nothing that Robert says here is he going to go back to the fucking the board of yeah. fucking DreamHack directors and go, okay, guys, well, we told them on Unfiltered that we're going to do this or this or this or this, so now we have to drive through next DreamHack because that's what we promised the, four, the 2,000 Steven, people. I, uh, sorry there's to, no, there's to, no accountability here. There's no, I can't that, like force that, anybody on this show. That, to that is actually what accountability is. Here's the reason, right? There's why no the world is fucked on up. This show for anything Steven, that comes on here. I've got the secret for you why the world is fucked up, okay? All right. If you were to meet Hitler, okay, if you met him on a personal level and you didn't know him and you knew he'd done terrible things, but you didn't, you'd never actually met him, you probably, to some minor degree, most people would think, okay, well, if you're being really honest, even though he's done Won terrible things, wonky you, mustache, you but it's kind of nice guy. You should probably, you should probably be like, oh, I'll take him on whatever terms I meet him. Okay, if he's reasonable to me, I'll be reasonable back to him. That premise alone is how all evil shit in the world is able to be done. Because as long as the person who meets you, you don't question. Like for example, if I met someone like that, I actually just wouldn't talk to them. Or if they talk to me, I would actually say something like, I disagree with the way you do that. Actually, that's not that's not acceptable. How? I would just blithely hey, let you. Guys. How would you? How would you know? That. How would you know? <clears throat> In I've already done, mate. There's a, yeah, there's a really good point. <laughs> yeah, you met him? Yeah. You met him? There's a, good, there's a <laughs> sick quote here that supports exactly what Duncan is saying. I, I, I want to say it's by Voltaire. It might not be, but it's, um, the deepest circles of hell are reserved for men who, in times of great crisis, maintain their neutrality, right? Yes. Essentially, yes. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Sweden is actually, Sweden there, is, I, I actually, Sweden is, is actually a, a very good Example of that. Yes. There's, there's, there's a much better, uh, <laughs> Stephen, there's a much better quote that encapsulates what Duncan was saying, and it's by Edmund Burke. Uh, it's all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. And yeah, in this instance, what, well, what, well, well, kind of, uh, mine's better. Uh, what Duncan's <laughs> I like my actually, I prefer mine much more, but okay. Well, we, 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 we'll have, we'll have a dick measuring contest around <laughs> the break. But uh, I, I think what Duncan is postulating is that in this instance, we're obviously the good men that, that, do nothing and and Robert is the great evil. Last thoughts. Last thoughts. Okay, I'm 
I'm done. After this, I'm done talking about this. Yeah, last You're thought. Like a super fucking deep topic. A deep topic of you have systems in place that give rewards to people that perpetuate a fucked up system, and you're saying that everybody should try to kick back, which I agree, which is good. If everybody in a system tries to buck it, or at least the majority, then then you end up with something better than what was before. But the problem is that if there's only a few individuals that try to buck said corrupt systems, the systems just fuck those people over, and then they're gone, and then they're replaced instantaneously. That, that so it's really hard as like an individual to say like, well, I'm gonna rise above this bullshit, and I'm just gonna do this, even though. Steven, say, speak well, slower. That... I'm from Sweden. I can't understand you. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, all right, we're gonna switch. We're gonna switch topics here, and uh, this is not gonna be a quick one either, unfortunately. All right, so League of Legends topic. Obviously, a lot of stuff going on with uh, just Monty and, and CLG and stuff. So with Oren on here and being on this show where you're not with Monty, maybe it, you know might be a different uh, or at least viewed differently. Um, Want to get your thoughts on this? I know we've seen seen you tweet about it and that sort of bit, but um, thoughts on just the overall reactions to Monty and uh, just the, the whole Reggie thing, and but particularly Monty being a good coach or not, or if CLG needs a new coach. The stupidest part about the whole discussion about coaches is that no one who's a random person in the industry who isn't directly involved with the teams has any clue how good any of these coaches actually are. No one even knows if there's a team that's a brilliant set of players who have a very simplistic coach who isn't even that good, win anyway. No one knows whether someone has a genius coach and his team can't implement what he does and they lose anyway. No one knows if this coach even actually does a coaching role or whether he's just the manager. No one knows whether this coach here is just the analyst, but they call him the coach. So when people have these discussions, all they're going to go off is what are the results of the team? And if the team wins, the coach must be good. The team loses, the coach must be bad. So this whole topic, the most worthless aspect of it was the fact that Monte Cristo is a remote coach. He lives in Korea, he watches the streams online, he talks to them on vent, and obviously he can't personally Wait, be Monte there. Wait, Chris is a coach? Yeah, yeah he's coach he's for CLG. Coach CLG. Coach for CLG. LOL. You, you're such a fucking troll, dude. <laughs> well, here's the... Oh, yeah. Okay, like, alright, alright, right. keep, going, keep going, keep going, Don. Keep going, Don. Go on. Here's, no here's more interruptions, point. Robert. No more interruptions. It's not like CLG went into drop the coaching situation. <laughs> like, oh, I hope Monty and Crystal can be a real coach because we all know the only way someone can coach is if they live in the same room and are there to give people hugs and pats on the back and how you doing, kiddo? Like, we know it can't work. No, they entered into it knowing he was remote. Now, why did they do that? Here's the key dynamic. They did it because this guy has access and has seen more games of high-level League of Legends than probably anyone who's ever lived and knows more as a non-pro than I would venture anyone out there in the world who's not a yep. pro themselves. And therefore, that value supersedes the fact he can't be there in person and deal with some minor stuff. So the idea that a remote coach can't be good and can't affect the team and can't, can't have any value is utterly stupid. That's the part where Reginald failed completely. If he'd have come out at the beginning and said, I don't think you can do it if you're not there, and I think you have to be able to do man management, I think you have to be with the players to get a sense of the vibe, then he might have had a point. Instead, what he said essentially was, you're not a coach unless you live there, and you, that was all implied, but he never broke it down. You're not a coach because you, you just live over there and you just do whatever you do analysis, and he doesn't know himself. Well, here's another example, okay. The team that just won LCS Europe, Alliance, had a 75% win rate and went 3-1 to one against every opponent. They never lost two games against one opponent. This team was coached entirely remotely until the playoffs with that 75% win rate. So how is that possible? If Monte Cristo can't coach, how can he coach? What happens is his team won in game, so he's now a good coach. Like that's a, it's a ridiculous premise. If someone's more knowledgeable, that can make up for other areas they don't have, like they're not there in person. So I don't even really see what the controversy is on this, you know? Well, they're just so the, how... the controversy is strictly looking at time. All right, and yeah, in a particular case where somebody does no more than the next guy, sense, no, no. Monte Cristo said he spends thirty hours a week coaching. Okay, right? Does that mean, There's... with no context, that someone who spends sixty hours does a better coaching job? What if that guy's an idiot? He might, might waste yeah. his sixty hours on someone that doesn't make There's sense. Nobody's saying Secondly, that. Secondly, but... what is Monte Cristo's actual job that takes away from his thirty hours? Oh, he watches the best Korean Le League of Legends team in the world. I, okay, here's an example. I actually asked, I contacted Leviathan Lol, the guy who's the analyst and coach of Alliance, because he's a succeeding from the same position Monty was in. So mm -hmm. I thought, I'll ask this guy what his circumstances are and find out, is there something he's doing that the others aren't, because he's remote. And he told me, yeah, I spend all day watching, doing the coaching, okay? I spend like 12 hours a day and it's six days a week. And so he's done way more hours. But then I asked him, oh, do you watch uh, OGN much? And he was like, not really. Like my style's more like, I just find styles that I think will work for my players. 
So actually, Monte Cristo's real job is basically free scouting for his his side job. Secondly, I'll throw True. in one okay. more thing. I'm not going to give details because people don't know this. But Monte Cristo, for the amount of money he earns for coaching CLG, is a fucking pittance compared to some of the coaches you know of. People you're thinking of now who are big coaches are earning massive amounts. He's doing it. It wouldn't be worth his time to become this full-time coach of CLG. They wouldn't pay him enough for what he can get doing the casting. So again, you have to ask yourself, do you want him? If so, then you have to agree to this level. Like, I can't have this level of access and I can only get this. But is the rest of it going to make it more worthwhile? I think it just does. To, I've never just, heard anyone just, give a reason why it doesn't, you know. Just to wade in on the whole issue about Monty coaching. Like, I, first of all, i got to say, like, uh, Reginald, you know, I, I've written some negative things about him in the past. I've also written some positive things about him in the past. I think in terms of brand building, he's done an exceptional job at TSM. I think in terms of uh, people management and also having that level of self-awareness, you need to be a public figure. He's absolutely lacking. So the um, and, and, and this really came across in his attack on Monte Cristo recently. So he came across as a massive hypocrite because one of the things that he said he wanted to stamp out of the scene was this trend in summoning insight, which is to attack players and personalities for not being uh, adept to what they do. So he decides then as soon as CLG are out of the tournament, like literally moments after it happens, to launch an attack on the team and on their coach, which these two things do not sit side by side. It's a massive act of hypocrisy, uh, and it makes him look incredibly stupid. I also sat through all 18 minutes of that excruciating video, listening to him mumble and repeat the same sentence, <laughs> which effectively amounted uh, to, well, if, if, you, if you talk the talk, you better walk the walk, which is such a complex shush. philosophical okay, idea. So, so you're... Um, you're you're absolutely right about the video. Okay, so the video, there's. Well, there... I, I did. I did have more points. Okay, keep going. Keep going, well, Richard. Yeah, you, keep going. You, Richard, you don't sorry. need to take over Robert and uh, on, interrupt everybody. No, Richard, it, it, like, Richard. This is your party. Have you ever thought it's of a show party with, with Richard Lewis, Robert Olin in control on it? I feel like you get a lot of words think, in edgeways. I, I, I think we've done it. Haven't we done back it? And forwards. Uh, we might have done it before, but Richard, continue. So, so here's the thing, right? Okay. So, sorry, I've got a mouthful of pretzel. Richard, I was, henceforth, I, was, I, uh, henceforth I will be quiet, okay? Thank I you, Old Bean. So, so here's the thing, right? Like, Monte Cristo, in terms of assessing his coaching, like, this bullshit about him not in, doing any coaching on the team, and it is just exactly that, it is bullshit, uh, is such a terrible piece of misinformation to put out there. I don't think he does coaching in the traditional form, and I think that's how Reggie can maybe get around saying what he said. But it's like Duncan says, like, how can we say that this guy's a terrible coach when in actual fact, one of the principal jobs he does, if anything was to detract from his coaching, is being a commentator and an analyst. And whenever I look into the community, whenever I see players' feedback, they're all like, oh my God, like, Monty knows way more. Uh, than anybody else. Equally, just you wouldn't believe it. privately how many fucking players say to me, "I wish we had a coach like Monty." Yeah, well, no, I mean, I, mean I, don't, I don't ask them if they think that. They just say like, "Oh, I ask some." I could. There's teams that were really good, and I said, "Why don't you get a coach?" And they were like, "There well, aren't people like Monty out there." That was like a one-off guy. There's no one like that. Like, if we could get him, we would, but he'll never leave. Well, there's nobody <laughs> better. There's nobody better better at the analytics than. So, than so, 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 go ahead, sorry, Richard. Go on, Richard. Richard. Oh. Well, I was going to say, the, the problem is that, like, coaching in esports is still, like, esports is one of those really young things. When you talk about coaching and, like, actual athletics, like, how to coach people is, like, a really well-established thing that's happened yeah, for fucking, for hundreds of years. But in esports, like, in my time in the Star Tale house and looking at what their coach did and then talking to some of the other Korean players, coaches for StarCraft 2, except for, like, the one-off, like, I would say... Would you would you say that maybe like Coach Park is maybe like the Monte Cristo of the StarCraft 2 scene, Thorin? Mm -hmm. Like that, that would be like kind of... StarCraft 2, a lot of the ESF it's guys. It's the other way. It's the other way around. Whereas right? the guys who are the Kessel well, guys, they're the really tenured sort of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But but a lot of the coaches in StarCraft 2, literally, the coach's job was to just drive players to and from like the GSL studio. Like that's all they would do. They they didn't they didn't have very many coaches. And it kind of sounds like in League of Legends, it might be a similar thing where Monte Cristo like actually knows how to like analyze and give good feedback to players and shit because even just watching a lot of games isn't enough it's possible to watch a lot and not know how to give players the correct advice yeah, um, not know how to apply any of what you're watching like all of that is really possible too so i mean like coaching is still like one of those really new things in esports where like a lot of people just don't i think a lot so, of people don't really so, understand it because there's no precedent set so another point i wanted to make was <clears throat> Uh, if Reggie was the authority on coaches, um, and I, Richard, I'm, Richard, no, Richard, no, hold, Rob, please Rob, be please. inflammatory. 
Okay, I'll try and be in as inflammatory as I can without <laughs> saying people look like animals or anything. So, um, I, I, I'll try. So People oh, do. Oh, so... People were originally animals of Russia. They evolved. No, yeah, I know. I, I, I heard oh, about boy. this guy from Darwin. I, I don't know if anyone's heard then of why him. Are still it's, dispute, left. it's like a if theory, that's you know. If yeah, that's true, why are the theory. monkeys left? Please. Why won't Darwin... <laughs> why, 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 left? why didn't Darwin grow the whole evolution pie so all the animals could have evolved into humans? That's what I want to know. Anyway, okay, so point. Let's, um, right, so the point I am trying to make uh, with Robert here is that if Reginald was an authority on coaches, like they picked up Loco Toco, that uh, a lot of people raised a lot of eyebrows about that, right? Like, oh, this is, he's a controversial figure. He's been associated with some uh, very dubious things. No, I've met Loco Toco. He's a great guy. I think he's a super cool dude. Like, really like him. I think he's uh, very genuine and an honest personality. I've got no means of assessing whether he's a good coach or not. And it's like Duncan says, so let's defer the results. Well, the pre Loco Doco TSM doesn't look that much different to the post loco doco tsm and it, it, reggie even alluded to this in his video by saying uh you know like you may look like the results are the same but let me tell you how the, everything behind closed doors is going much better and it's like well ultimately it doesn't fucking matter what's going on behind closed doors it's you are going to be judged by the results and the tsm's performances haven't looked like they've brought in some super amazing polished coach and that's speaking as someone that really respects loco doco I think CLG have had some inherent problems, and I don't know how much Monte Cristo has been able to address those or even perhaps contribute to those. But the idea that he is a worthless asset and a fraud is one of the biggest lies perpetuated in fucking League of Legends, and people should be absolutely ashamed uh, that, that there's another organization manager out there wanting to twist this particular knife and perpetrate this particular lie based on a personal grievance that goes back to fucking season one uh, when, when a tournament was organized. It's really pathetic. And, you know, let's just, let's just judge characters, okay? I've never seen Monte Cristo have a fucking outburst. I've never seen him behave like a tyrant. I've never seen him bully his team. I've never seen him m mismanage anybody or misstep in the public eye. I've seen Reggie do these things a bunch of times. I know which, if I had to pick a side on this particular argument, I know who I'd rather be listening to. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, and that's got nothing to do with anything. Uh, but literally, I think, I think that whole argument about Monte Cristo actually being a fraud and being detrimental to CLG success is <laughs> such a fucking load of bullshit. It makes me sick. There, done. I'm out. <laughs> okay, all right. Um... Please, Richard, come back. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't, Robert. This is your time to shine. Like, you got to oh, no, like no, no. 30 minutes. So, no, so no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm getting hate mail here. Uh, really so, so hate just think, mail. People just think you're drunk. They've obviously never been out drinking with you. <laughs> then, they <know. laughs> then they know the reality. So CLG obviously, you know, had a pretty poor showing. And, I mean, is this just scapegoating at this point? I mean, Reggie's thing is more of an attack for, you know, past reasons, more personal things, I think. If there's one thing but I they're... really hear, it's when people use... They, they decide what they want to be true, right? So they find some logic that can sort of hold it together. It's called spurious argument, okay, or sophistry. Okay. You know it really it's not that true, but okay, it works in a way. Like if a person doesn't know some specific information, they might think you're right. Here's the key thing. We don't need to speculate, did Monte Cristo do a good job in CLG? Go and watch the games of CLG before they had Monte Cristo. Watch yeah. the games now. Look at the level that the competition is raised to. Mm -hmm. And here's my prediction. If Monte Cristo hadn't have joined CLG, I think they would have gotten relegated last split. I think they would have been a team mm -hmm. where they would have fallen out okay. in like the summer split, the first one he was in, or they'd be a bottom ranked team right now. If you look at the way they used to play and the way they used to just do everything around double lift, it was a fucking nightmare. And he actually came in and put a system over it that, yeah, the result is the same. He finished fifth to sixth place, just like they did before. But if it's a different quality of league, then in theory, you might have done a lot there to raise your level, but the water level overall is higher. So that doesn't even make sense. Like for example, CLG were really famous for having no clue how to close, get, close games ever. They just always got those stupid Baron fights so they lost it, or they waited for Doublelift to get super huge and maybe he made one mechanical right. misplay and didn't carry the game. 
the CLG this season have all these stats where like they're the best team in the whole league for like closing a game at tw after 20 minutes with a lead. They're the best team at taking like most towers after like 25 minutes. Some some stats like that where these things will only come if you systematically sat down and thought like this is a new focus for us. We're going to do this and here's a flow right. chart. When you get in this position, you look, is this, these are my options. Now I do this. The team before that had none of those clues. They used to just be going willy nilly all over the place. So you can see that, ma that clearly that's helped a lot. If I'd look at CLG now and ask what made them lose, I don't think it was coaching. I look and I see specific players choking a game. They don't play the way they do in the regular season. And so everything you've planned based on the regular season now doesn't work. Now, yeah. if you want, I'll put some of that blame off on Riot that you only play the playoffs two times a fucking year. Whereas if you were normal tournament circuit, like every other game, you'd quickly find out who the choker guy is, who you have to remove from your team. Because you play the first three tournaments with him, he fails completely. You're like, right, you know what? Pick someone else up. That takes a whole year in League of Legends. That's like a year of your life you've given up. And at that point, you've invested. And you don't want to throw that guy away. This is a bad system. Just add a quick point on at the end of that, because I know you want to wrap this point up. Uh, I also want to say as well, for Reginald to be the guy that comes out and talks about somebody holding a team back is fucking hilarious. Because this guy shackled the odd one as a jungler to being a second support for for ages. Like, the odd one couldn't leave mid in case Reginald made a mechanical fucking misplay and he needed the support there. And the odd one's entire game was basically about, you know, gank mid, gank mid, gank mid. Mate, if we get Reginald fed, we'll play okay. If Reginald gets fucked, we won't. And, you know, for him to talk about being a guy who held the team back when he played way too long, when it was obvious he didn't have the skills anymore, and until they brought Bjergsen in, they didn't even look like they were going to be a, a, a real uh, top-tier team. A lot of people pointed out his poor performances, um, you know, at Worlds when he did go with TSM. I'm just saying that that is a guy who you know didn't didn't step down at the right time and did hold his team back and that's objectively inarguable in my opinion so for him just to be talking did, about that is incredible i mean without even trying anything else just because he just because he had problems with that of taking too long to step down that doesn't necessarily mean he's wrong when he says someone else no but the question no, is Stephen, no. what qualifies him to know what he's talking about here he I mean, himself had quite a if, poor if understanding you're, if of you're team rem... dynamics yeah and we but... changed track no, I mean, if, you're, yeah. if, it, if it's per if you're personally involved in the situation, like it changes a little bit. I don't know. I mean, it's... hey, Robert, what is that? Duncan and Richard, you yeah. guys, you're, you're you're old old school uh, Counter Strike guys, right? We do we do try and be old school Counter Strike guys. Yeah. yeah. I'm as, apparently not. I'm I'm just as, in, in as, as am I. So, hmm. for the past what is it eight months, Counter Strike uh, Global Offense has been blowing up and. Uh, you know, this last uh, ESL thing just went ESL bananas. <laughs> how big is ESL one? Be? Yep. All right. So the question is, how big is CS:GO going to get? That's, that's what Robert's asking. Well, I mean, it's uh, look like nothing in esports. It, I wouldn't say it hasn't capped. We what, what we need to think about here in CS:GO uh, is how things like betting and skins have almost art artificially inflated the viewership and how many people are watching it based on the love of the game because the CSGO lounge is it, situation... It, is it free to play or is it free to pay? Well, here's the thing, right? So, regardless whether it goes what? free to play or not... What? No, I, I, I do like that. I think that's a great, great soundbite. Uh, I'm going to make that... I'm going to make a documentary called that because there was the <laughs> free-to-play documentary on Valve. I'm going to make free-to-play or free-to-pay. Which the was Robert shit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it, Thank it was. Which it was, was it, shit. It, 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 it so everyone who wanked stuff. off over that, get the fuck out my face. <laughs> like oh, oh, for every little nerd out there. Who wants to the give him an extra hour on the PC. It's fucking unreal. The show wasn't even about Dota. It was about how oh, his families God. died and they didn't stop playing a video game. It's like, yeah, great. This is amazing, mate. What's good about Dota again? Oh, that people's families died and they keep playing. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I didn't do it. Okay, okay. all right. Is that, did you want to know that as well? All right. To, so I... free to... <laughs> No, no, no. What, what, what I like is that the fact that it was controversial enough to say that that documentary was shit, and then Duncan just went, "What, what, what did you say? Was it you wank me off, or People fuck off if you wank?" Off how wonderful it was. Get the fuck out my face if you're wanking off over that. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Which again, a, a glorious image. Uh, but look, I, I, I think we need to really look at the CSGO lounge situation and the skins betting situation. Uh, we know people have dummy accounts and they link them up and but they Richard, watch Richard, you hate CSGO. And Duncan, you hate CSGO. Right? Obviously we do. We absolutely yeah. despise it. Which is why we spent 
probably well, I've spent a decade in Duncan I, even longer. I, I've, I've seen people get, uh, on Reddit saying that you hate no. it. So uh, yeah, I know because they're because they're morons. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that the, uh, that, that's all. Uh, the thing is, I understand why because they say they hate us, yet they watch all our stuff all the time. So they understand hating something yet being intricately involved in. Whereas personally, I hate the show, uh, The Big Bang Theory. Right. So as a result, I've almost never watched it, and I don't really talk about it. Sure. But almost, almost never watched it. But you watched it. Yeah. Well, you have to watch it. You have to watch, it know it. You have to watch <laughs> this and see what everybody else is talking about, right? Exactly. It's kind of like Wolf. Okay. You have to read one of his tweets to hate him. So uh, anyway, as I was but saying, here's what's amazing: Siska. the same people. TSM, <laughs> no, I'm not saying. One of the I'm reasons they criticize Monte Cristo, right? Is he does this talk show with me where we talk about legal legends. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I was going to get to that. Yeah. I was going right? to get to that. Yeah. The reason why mm -hmm. they get upset is because they watch the show every week, even though they don't like criticism, and they can recite to you what we said. Like he, at this show, we said this, and it's like, why are you still watching? No, but what he does is totally toxic, and that shouldn't be allowed. Shouldn't be allowed to watch this. Like, well, why are you watching it? No, but what I'm saying is that he should be banned and people should stop watching it. Yes, you're still watching it though, Reggie. <laughs> There's actually screenshots where his account okay. watches the fucking show. So what? what at, this point, at this point, I'm actually like fucking his favorite entertainment th or something. Thanks for they your view, man. A, Steven, you'll love this. They even gave an example where I'd criticized their jungler and they won a series. And so they actually said in a vlog, like, actually, I think watching Thorin really, like, motivated him to want to <laughs> show how good he was. It's like, didn't I just do him a favor then? If I actually motivated him to do better in the game. You're actually, like, your own PR isn't working like, here, guys. You, you're making my show you're like sound the, better. You're I'm like, like the, skip, in the Skip Bayless of freaking esports. No, uh, so I wanted to bring up the fact uh, where some people were talking about whether it's, like, you know, him being an analyst and being on a show like Summoners Inside is kind of conflict of interest since he is, you know, Absolutely coach not. of a team. Absolutely and not. so Absolutely. I want to bring up that topic. We see it actually in other, you know, other esports too, even StarCraft 2, where we had, you know, like Jeff in control, like on a, on a show, on a community show too. So, yeah, is this a bad thing having somebody who's. Have you ever done an interview or seen an interview with someone where they're not on a team that's good enough to win? They'll probably never win. And you ask them stuff like, what's the goal for the next three months? Like, well, it's got to be to win the championship. And I feel like he's going to get that break and he's going to win. And you just think, what a. What? The wrong question to ask. That was a waste of my time. Monte Cristo on his show has consistently predicted his team won't win worlds yeah, will true. never beat big korean teams and even when asked about cloud nine when cloud nine were below them in the standing said i'm afraid of cloud nine i think if we play them in a series they will beat us so that's actually a perfect example of someone who's capable of separating being a coach and being so, an analyst Duncan, Duncan, you mean that that uh, uh, monte cristo is actually the, the only true uh, coach in esports because it's true. Oh, not in esports. Because there's some in, there's some Korean guys are really good. Plus, actually, Loco Doco. As far as I know, I don't know much. I, mean, I don't talk to players on like some snitches. But as far as I can tell, <laughs> from I think he has had some effect. Like I think the pick ban phase is way better since he arrived, and I think he probably has helped certain players like amazing fix things. So. I could, I could believe there are coaches. The difference is there's a scale of them, okay? And there's a few yeah. that are worth their weight in gold. And whatever they demand, you essentially have to give them because they're that good, you know? They are like the Jose Mourinho or the Phil Jackson or any of these guys who are that good. Mm -hmm. That if you have to give them something extra than a normal guy, you just have to. Meanwhile, if you want the bog standard guy where you can set all the terms, his level's going to be much, much lower. And that's why a lot of those coaches almost seem to have no impact. It doesn't really matter if they have a bad coach, a good coach. Mm -hmm. The players just play their game and they win the game or lose the game, you know? So actually, I think he's one of the best for sure. But that's also a part of what's funny is if he didn't, if he wasn't an analyst and he didn't do his job as a caster, he couldn't be as good a coach as I know he is. Because the style oh, of play he's implemented is that he breaks yeah. the game down spot in a on. sense that he doesn't just take something a Korean guy does and go, right, copy that guy because he's doing it the yes. best. He looks at like the skill set of his players. He finds out if they're comfortable with that. He tests it out and tests whether what they're saying is correct. They are actually comfortable with it. Then he implements it that way. And part of that is understanding because he's a commentator, he looks at other teams. Like, he might look at a Korean team and be like, this team has awesome parts, but it doesn't succeed because they don't pl use play to their strengths. And he's taken that analytical side of being a caster and applied it to doing a team aspect, whereas I don't think a lot of new coaches could actually do that. I think they'd be incapable of... They wouldn't think that way. They wouldn't have the same mental processes, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think I think Monty would do that regardless. As, uh, like, if he was doing coaching full-time, he'd do the same thing. He just wouldn't be doing yeah, it on air. That's the thing. That's why I made the point about the fact that his job doing OGN actually makes him be an excellent I, scout. Sure, sure. Because there's games that I, I don't watch certain OGN games when it's the two worst teams play. He has to because he casts it. So he's actually, in his real job, they're forcing him to watch more okay, games fair. that might have something beneficial to his other job. I, it's not moonlighting when the other job helps. 
I think this whole <laughs> okay, conflict sure. of interest thing is like almost a ridiculous uh, 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 allegation, and I know you're not making it, Chris, but I know some others have. No, so if you look at Gary Neville, prime example, you know, Gary Neville came out of, uh, Gary Neville's the Man United right back, if you uh, are American and you don't really follow so soccer, uh, he plays for Man played for Manchester United his entire career, uh, and when he first moved into punditry, and he is Sky Sports, which is our biggest um, satellite TV station that, that you have to pay pay-per-view to watch the soccer over here. Uh, if if he when he got that job, everyone was like, "Well, he's just going to wank off Man United the entire time and talk about how good they are." <laughs> and this is a conflict of interest. Why the fuck have they picked him up? Man United have enough bias in the media because they were the number one Premier League product. And what you Richard, actually, got, Richard, 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 you have yeah. to say Belland in in yeah. one sentence. I, I will. Otherwise so a lot of people thought really he was going to be a biased Belland. And, uh, they, and, and they were absolutely wrong. They, were, they you know, what we actually got was now somebody that a few years down the line we consider to be one of the best pundits in the business. That like everyone says, say what you will about Gary Neville, but fucking hell, he's honest, and he does. He rips Man United a new arsehole when, when the time comes. He rips Liverpool a new arsehole. He, I've even seen him like when Chelsea scored in the Champions League that late goal. There's a famous clip of him having what sounds like an orgasm over Torres scoring a goal and putting Chelsea. <laughs> you know in the semi-finals or the finals i think it was of the champions league so he is just somebody that loves football and uh, to give an american maybe analogy it's like ray lewis this is a guy who obviously had a lot of controversy in his career he played until he was really old uh in the beloved Bal in a baltimore ravens team and when he got picked up by i think it was espn to do commentary everyone was you know I, everyone's like oh well you know that means there's going to be ravens bias and shit it doesn't work like that and, and one of the things about monty is <clears throat> he's definitely smart enough to understand that it only harms his brand if he uses one job to effectively promote and, and, and supplement the other. Um, it does it in terms of a skill set, but he doesn't need to be front and center, basically putting out propaganda about CLG on a show like Summoning Insight to benefit CLG and benefit his coaching role. By contrast, okay. um, I think when we look at some of the other teams that maybe criticize Monty, they treat every uh you know media opportunity as just exactly that propaganda and I, I i i literally think that he he honestly gets so much fucking criticism um uh, for wearing all these different hats and in actual fact i've never seen him step over the boundaries where i think he's moved yeah i agree too i mean i've watched quite a few of the episodes and we're not he criticizes the where... clg plenty I mean, we're not in a world where we can have perfect people who exist in vacuums and only do that one thing and have no interest. So, oh, what if I do some casting in a game, say CS? Well, aren't I going to be biased against people who denied me interviews or someone who was like a bit of a dick to me a while ago? Well, no, you'd hope that if you look at my casting and I'm not biased, then there isn't a conflict of interest there. What if Steven does casting for something? Is he going to be biased against everyone who doesn't play Zerg? Is he just going to constantly <laughs> slip that in there and say, oh, it's all, bu you know, that guy did just win that game, but it's sort of bullshit. Like Blizzard just really ruined that game for me there. Maybe, maybe not. I'd just look at his actual casting and judge off that if he has a con Just saying, well, it's possible he could have a conflict of interest. Yeah, but does he though? Well, no, I'm just saying it's possible, therefore we shouldn't allow it to. No, but does he actually... Well, I, thing I, is, I think it's a big thing. Con it's not actually examples. of interest <laughs> makes for a more interesting world. Well, if it's just drama. I mean, it's just people trying to bring up drama. Well, that's the thing that's is, pretty if much everybody's No, the joke there was makes for a more Kumbaya, interesting it's conflict. It's surely boring. not that. <laughs> Kumbaya is boring. It looks nice on paper, but it's fucking boring. That's why in the United right, States, our president could actually be born in another country because the conflict of interest there would be so interesting, so entertaining. <laughs> or, uh, or Cheney, Cheney uh, and all of his ties to Halliburton and sending them over to rebuild Iraq. It's so interesting to talk about all the possibilities of why we, we've got Quagmire there. Who knows, you know? You can't dispute that it's interesting, Steve. Yeah, course, but interesting isn't always up. good. I mean, that's a ridiculous no. thing to say. Why do we have to talk about stuff giant piece first? That's the old Chinese curse, isn't it? Chris will tell Chinese you about curse, that one. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, you know, may you live in interesting times. <laughs> yes. Uh, or, yeah, or that's a fortune cookie, man. We have to put fortune. We have to put fortunes or like that can to I cover everything. Water. 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 <laughs> yeah, that too. We could have got your kids on that instead of those T-shirts, oh, but you you man. have you're running a sale, aren't you? That's right, fire sale. Gotta get you kicked off here, man. I don't even know. We I don't think we've gotten to fifty yet, but you never uh, will. All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap up. We got a. Some more guests to get on, but again, Duncan, Robert, just, awesome uh, having you just on. Just you wrap up, I want to ask Duncan one thing. Okay, sure. Uh, this this needs to be said I, I, I publicly. Did didn't 
Reggie have the option to come on summoning insight multiple times. Oh yeah, right. Everyone who's a everyone who's a famous or interesting pro could come on the show if they wanted to. Well, do you ask them or do they? I mean, you ask them. I've never asked on. Reginald directly, but I have asked TSM players. And here's the thing: people don't know before that official on gamers blacklist. Essentially, I was already blacklisted. I made this point on the fucking yeah. show that everyone that was the whole about. point. Yeah, yeah. I, I explicitly That's never good. brought you, it up. You know, you I know that I blacklisted you. You, you asked me yeah, repeatedly. Well, that's just because uh, you had a list of races said, you don't no, like. No, 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 no. <laughs> you have a list of races you don't like. <laughs> and I was right there with you, mate. I was like, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> now, how do we get about a dream hack? Come on, we've got to get some good Swedish boys winning these tournaments, Robert. How do we do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I'm glad you remember that conversation. <laughs> oh yes. All right. That, that I, was some, somewhere in Poland, I think. Can I ask Thorne a question? I'm still curious. Sure, go for it. Yeah. Do, do you do you do you follow the Dota two scene as much as you follow like the league no, scene? And the... I, I barely follow Dota at all. I've watched some of the big finals. I don't really know that much about the game. Oh fuck! Well then, maybe you wouldn't have enough chance to. This. I'm just curious. Do you think? Do you think that the way the international is set up? Do you think it's healthy to have for the longevity of the scene for the benefit no, of the players? I, think it's I know we can. <clears throat> Okay. I think that too, there's two really big problems in Dota 2 right now, as far as I can tell. One is that the International went from one of the best tournament structures I've ever seen yeah. to one of the stupidest tournament structures I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. Where they had that, remember the what TI3 had like, it was like, oh, I think it was two groups of six teams, was it? Or eight, six or eight in two different groups. So you got a lot of group play, you still got people to play each other, like whatever, 16 or 19 times or whatever it is. Then they went into the bracket, and the bracket was huge. And the idea was you play through the upper bracket and the lower bracket. I thought it was the best compromise on a really good system I've ever seen. Then this year, they made it so that the majority of the international was everyone playing this one huge group play. Mm -hmm. Half of the games, which unless you're really hardcore, you're not going to give a fuck about. And so the, half the tournament is stuff you don't care about. Then they made it where if you finish top two in the best of one stage, the most random, the, the least skilled in theory, the least prepared area, the best of one, you got to go directly to the top six of the entire tournament. So what you did there was you said, in my system, I'm deciding who the best teams are from right. the group. OK, here's my two best teams. Now I'm going to make sure they play as few best of X series as possible, because who the fuck will likes to watch the best teams in the world play best of X series, right? That's really boring. Let's have them skip half the tournament and go right there. That's fucking a terrible system. Like a better system would be something like you get a seeding based on the group or you get maybe you maybe you can skip one round. You don't skip half the tournament up here because actually if you wanted to see a good storyline and see good matches, it was better to watch the teams in the lower bracket go through the international like Evil Geniuses yep. or these teams where they played match after match after match. Mm -hmm. The great teams, you just saw them stomp three sets of teams and they were done with the tournament. Secondly, what Stephen was saying there about the health of the scene in terms of having this huge tournament. Yeah, I like the fact that you could like it's sick that you could come like whatever eighth place and get like. 500k or something retarded <laughs> yeah. that's really good but you've seen by the fact these people are retiring yeah. that's actually quite a bad system i think cs yeah. has indirectly backed into a better system where we have 750k over a year but it was three tournaments spread over the year so you have to first of all you can't win one and then like it, it makes no sense to me right that you could win every single tournament in all of dota not just win some small ones you could win every single one and you wouldn't even be close to first place at the international that's somewhat a bit off there i agree the international is the big the, that... the pressure one you want to reward them but that's it's disproportionate whereas if you won all the cs go majors you would win like three hundred thousand or something you could probably get to about 150k by f finishing like fourth at those majors and winning every other tournament you could you could actually get you could still be the best and prove you the best without winning that. Whereas, to me, like why make the international winner the best in the world? That has the to add to the other accomplishments. The international is a bit convoluted and it's it's a beast of its own. Well, they could they could structure it differently too. They don't have. I mean, it, it is still pretty top heavy too. I was seeing like different complaints about how like the prize structure makes it so that you you run into this like tourney graveyard like like the months leading up to the international nobody really yeah, wants to send oh, players right. off to yeah. play yeah. the months the after thing, it, where teams are all the massive reshuffling it's like if you didn't win the international if you didn't qualify your team is fucked you're just done you go do something else like that, that yeah. exists in CS in theory if you're gonna make a change you make it after the major tournament you check if you're gonna fail there then you make your change right because yeah. in the month before oh. the big major you'd be an idiot to change right because actually if you've got any sort sure. of good teams. Well, the key thing about that is because you have three and they're based over the year, it gives you like multiple transfer windows. Whereas, yeah, that is like a really stupid part. This part where, like, dude, it'd be one thing if the guy who fails gets kicked out after the international. The guys who succeed the most just fucking retire. 
That sucks, yeah, sure. dude. Yeah, that is definitely the worst. And they ah, haven't even been sucks. in the scene necessarily very long, too. So it's just like, that is a terrible system, for sure. I'm loving how Robert's right. reenacting the scene from me. Something is. In Dota 2, it's not as big of an issue, right? Because actually, the rest of the Dota 2 circuit looks phenomenal. I think they have an awesome circuit. Like, especially mm -hmm. the key thing about Dota 2, I think, is the best, is opening up the compendiums for other events. This yeah. is the key thing. In CSGO, where we get the 250K, Valve takes the 250k out of the money you paid them for the cases, then they decide who gets the money. Whoa, so whoa, they could give it to the whoa, worst whoa. organizer hey, if they wanted Duncan, to. Wait, 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 wait. When it comes to uh, uh, <laughs> you know, what, what people contribute to a prize pool, okay, how much do you think DreamHack as an organization retains? How much does. Uh, the players get and how much does valve hoard how much well, should they like how much percent or something yeah they take silly amount just because they have an online uh, and sure. an, uh, you know an ip so it, it it isn't fair in that sense. Well, well it isn't, but my I, point is... It needs to change. I, I, I'm, I'm I not absolutely needs to change. What's it's, bad about this system, you know, okay, is the fact that they get to choose who gets the money, whereas in Dota 2, essentially, right. if I want to support Star Ladder, but I don't think that the Summit is a good tournament, then I pay my money for the Star Ladder compendium. Yeah. Star Ladder has an awesome tournament, and I've then chose which tournament I want yeah, to have yeah. the money. Yeah. In CSGO, mm -hmm. if, if, if the next DreamHack isn't a major, I can't choose to make it a major. Even if I want to give yes, money to Esports yes. for CSGO, I can't do it. So actually, I like, it, I like the yeah. choice of... I mean, those are two different uh, issues. Valve different issues. Is, a, is a different creature from every every other uh, game developer. CSGO yeah. is its own thing. Dota is its own thing. They, they, they're they not even on the same planet. Yep. Yes. Yep. You know? you. That's true. Shall I continue? <laughs> See, the polar bear I'm lives in the robber, robber, man, and he's he surrounded me. by snow. He's killing me. <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap up, okay? <laughs> let's just wrap up this this, out, this round, round two here. And uh, Duncan, Robert, <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Duncan, Eesh. I've... Uh, you know, I've really enjoyed uh, the times you have come on it. You know, I, I think I I had you come on after I saw you on on, on Richard's uh, show, and I was like, oh man, this dude got gotta have him unfiltered because it's just like you're just perfect. You're one of the quintessential like un unfiltered guests. So um, I know some episodes have not gone well for you, and and um, you know it, that's very unfortunate. But um, overall, you know, big thanks to you, and I will continue you know checking out all your content because I think it's you know exceptional. I'll say I'll say two things before they head off, and that is that okay. uh, I know Robert's always, uh, uh, how shall we say, um, seemingly tipsy when he comes on these shows. I think he suffers from the <laughs> this same is how he is all the time, which dude. is really a lack of confidence, uh, and he needs to drink, so he's got that fortitude. But he's uh, he's a great guy, like seriously, one of the great intellects in esports. Maybe didn't show it tonight, and secondly, <laughs> he didn't show it tonight. <laughs> Duncan is uh literally it's it's tragic that he's been um you know marginalized um in some sectors in the esports community because uh he, he con from here we no, love absolutely them. never dream hack mm -hmm. um but but you know like guys like me shouldn't be taking work from guys like duncan plain and simple uh and that isn't to say that i do but the the void he leaves has enabled me to shoehole myself into it so hopefully that's going to change in 2015 people can you know, maybe yeah. forgive and forget a little bit. And um, I want to see Duncan out there repping all the games that he knows a fuck ton about. Uh, and that includes Counter-Strike and that, that definitely includes League of Legends. So um, it's great to see him back on a show. It's been too long. So Yeah, last word for I Robert, love, too. I want to I give... love Duncan. One, one last I thing for Duncan. Robert, too. Hey, before you cut me off, I just <laughs> want to say this. Chris, I love you, man. Oh, I love you, too, man. And, you know, getting you a chance to been, work here. You, what you have done for the past two years is exceptional, I think, because you you've been a shining light in the space of esports. And let me pick let me pick up my violin. Dude, I, I, I told you, I told you, I have a I have a seat next to, on the park bench like. next to you. <laughs> oh God! Doodles. I told you, I have a seat saved for you on the park bench, man. Say like feeding the pigeons <laughs> there. No, but Robert, I really like. I think you're probably 
the best or one of the best uh, um, or worst. organization owners right now in esports and had a pleasure you know getting a chance to work your event you know mike had a lot to do with it too but you know i've never been to dream hack got a chance to actually go this year and you know that was my first game i've ever worked so i really had a um a blast doing that and i really you know uh, appreciate that too just getting to experience that side of the the industry too and you just you know hanging out with me this guy is awesome hopefully everybody watching will get a chance to to meet robert in person one of these days at the, <laughs> at the rate that he's hiring people uh, i'm sure i'm sure they will <laughs> yeah that'll absolutely. Be all, right. all right guys well i will uh we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll have total biscuit come on and we'll do some more StarCraft topics for you guys, since I know most of you guys are still StarCraft people. All right, we'll be right back. Yeah, peace out.